Dr. Vasis Carranza, and I'm the Associate Director of Programming, and I'm really excited to be here with you all. Great, Elizabeth. Hi guys, my name is Elizabeth Troiano and I'm the graduate project assistant uh, with ITA. So super happy to see you all. AJ. Hi everyone, my name is AJ Daughtry Krill. Really excited to see you all. And I'm um, one of the technology education leads. Mary Kay. Hi, I'm Mary Kay Dickinson. I am the tribal sites academic instructor and I'm very excited to see everyone. Thank you, Nino. Hi everyone, my name is Nino. I am our Tribal Sites Technology Education Lead. Thank you, and Brandon. Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Runcevath. I am a ITA academic instructor, and I'll also be serving as the lead counselor for the SRE program. All right, I don't think I miss any staff. Uh, I'll turn it over to Brenda, who will also help with the welcoming today. Okay, you can go to the next slide, Nino. Thank you. Um, so welcome everyone. Um, the purpose of this uh, meeting is to get you all um to know more about what SRE will be like for you all. Um, so we wanted to give you a little overview. So the purpose of SRE is really for you all to get experience with campus, what it's like to live on campus in a dorm, um, living eating, doing everything in um, campus, um, as well as uh, learn a little bit more about you, yourself, and what it means to be in a campus like UW Madison. Um, start your application process. We will be working on Well, you know what? Um, I know Brenda was having some difficulty with her. Um... The start of your senior year. Oh, there she is. <laughs> oh my gosh, sorry. Yeah, I've been having difficulties with my Wi-Fi all day. Um, I don't know what I missed. Well, you started you talking missing? about learning about things at UW um, this summer, purpose of that? Um, yeah, so the, the purpose is to get to know campus, to get comf comfortable with um, life on campus, especially as you matriculate to uh, a campus anywhere. Um, we're going to work on your application, um, your essays for uh, UW-Madison, and we really want you all to build um, build connections between the between all of the sites. So you'll meet your peers from like the Flambeau, Oneida, and Madison, and we really want you all to get to know each other so you build a strong community. Um, and this is really a time where we'll start your um, senior year. We will begin senior year during the summer and the whole process of college admissions will continue on during the fall year as well. Um, okay, next slide. So, um... One other thing we want to add too is that it will be fun. So you'll hear a little bit more as we go through some of the activities um, that you'll be involved with. So that will complement everything that Brenda said for you. And then also want to make sure if you aren't already aware, we are recording this presentation this evening. So please don't feel pressured that you got to capture all this information in notes. Um, really just kind of absorb it in, but we will send a copy of this recording to you in addition to some of the other materials that we make reference to this evening. So again, don't worry about trying to rush and take notes and keep track of everything. We got you. Um, as far as staffing, um, because we are in a residential um, Sunday to Sunday, um, you will have dorm counselors that will be working closely with you. So you have all of our lovely instructors that will be leading you, um, as Brenda mentioned, um, but also the counselors are your main everyday um, leads. They provide supervision for you um, and safety. So we have certain numbers that we have to stay within per adult as we move around campus, move around downtown, um, and also Devil's Lake. So we want to make sure, number one, your safety is kept, but also, too, they're there as mentors as well, too, to encourage you to be your first immediate go-to for assistance. They will be helping with team building and a lot of different activities outside of the academic um, circle. So you'll hear more about that from our lead counselor, Brandon, later in the presentation. Next slide, please. So where are you going to be staying? Um, this year, we're excited. We're going to be staying at Dejo Hall. 
De Show Paul, for those who are not familiar, is on an, a beautiful area of campus right on Lake Mendota. Um, this, um, this hall will be your home and there are rooms for everybody. You don't have to share room, students. You have your own private room. Um, and how the layout of the room is, is that you will share a bathroom that does have private stalls with three other, uh, three or maybe uh, four other students in a quad style setting. So it's quite nice because you do definitely, you will be with us all the time, but at night, you can have your quiet time, alone time to unwind in your own private room. We also do this to help mitigate any illnesses. And we'll talk about health and screening a little bit later, but it's nice to be able to be able to go back and reside in your own um, space. Now, as far as where we are located in parking um, and the whole moving in process, again, this will be outlined in future correspondence, so please check your email. But to give you a sense now that we do ask um, everybody to start checking in at 1130 on that day. Check-in will be from 1130 until 1230. Um, as far as parking, there's a couple different things. If you see on the map here, that in the green areas, those mark uh, where there is free parking on the weekends. Of course, there's limited spacing for that, but we wanna make sure that you're aware there are some free parking. In the blue areas that you'll notice here, lot 36, lot 67, those are paid, those are hourly um, parking, um, covered parking spots. We'll be confirming with um, the building manager of Dejop as far as how their setup will be for check-in. So usually what that means is they have designated staff in an area where families can pull up and drop off their materials or the student and their suitcase, luggage, what have you, and then go and park. They will direct you to where you can park your car. Um, again, we are still firming up those logistics with the housing um, of Dejop. So more information will come with regards to that closer to the time of SRE kicking off. And when you get this link, um, when you get this presentation, you'll see at the bottom there, there is a link that can take you directly to Dejop Residence Hall. So you can see not just samples of dorm rooms, but what the space offers. So for example, there is a coffee shop in there. There is also um, kind of like a miniature grocery store, if you will. And um, I believe Brenda will be talking about that later in this presentation. But again, for your viewing pleasure, you'll have access to this link and you can check it out. Um, a couple other things I wanted to say about that. I'm sorry, go back to the previous slide. With our checking in system, it's really important that, that um, first, we prefer the optimal check-in the preferred check-in is what parents check in their students. Um, so when you come in, we do have you sign your student in. You will also meet with Camp Health. Camp Health is at our location. It comprises of U University of Health Services nurses that are there 24 hours uh, throughout our stay in Dejop. So they're there to meet um, immediate needs and also um, students that have um, medication, um, scheduled medication, they're made aware of that um, and they hold on to your medication and secure it for you. Um, it's important that parents do check in their students, but we've realized over recent years that especially with our families that are coming from outside Madison, it can be a, a quite a long drive for a short drop off. So if you are making alternative arrival plans, we do need to know in advance what those are. There are health forms that um, everybody has to complete and there may be some special forms. Well, there are special forms if you know you are, let's say carpooling from Lac de Flambeau with another parent, um, we will need that information in advance. So again, I will be following up with, um, with everybody to really spell that out for you, but please just be aware of that. And also with check-in, um, it's always asked every year, we really do not want students driving themselves to campus. 
We do not have parking. We will not pay for parking. Um, and it really becomes almost a liability concern. Um, so we really do, we do not want students driving. Um, again, if there's some um, outside considerations that need to be made, we'll have to have a, a conversation um, well in advance, okay? So please, please do not show up driving to campus, okay? We will not have a place to, for you to park. Okay, thank you, Nino. Next slide, please. All right, so in the job, we'll have all our meals. The job comes equipped with a dining hall. Um, so right up below the dorm rooms is the dining hall and you'll have all your, meal, your meals there. Um, ITA provides all the meals for that time. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner will be provided by us through the job hall. Um, all you have to do is come down, eat, and then go on to your next um, activity. Um, so you don't need any money for food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you would like to purchase anything else outside of that, feel free to come prepare with extra money. You might want to buy coffee from the coffee shop. There, Like Marcia said, there's a little mini corner store that you can buy snacks from. Uh, we will also have uh, trips to Devil's Lake, and they have a shop there if you want to get something else. And we'll obviously be in downtown Madison, so when you have time and the counselors want to take you to State Street or do some shopping around campus, bring money for that. Um, I do believe that the mini corner store only takes credit card. Um, so if you need something from there and you don't have a credit card, we can work around that. Uh, but please bring money for anything else that you would like to spend money on. Um, there will also be laundry services at the job. Um, it's a week, but you never know. You might need those special pants or shirts for something. Um, we, there is laundry. It's free. Uh, and ITA will provide laundry detergent for you to use the um, laundry if you would like to. Um, next slide. Yeah. All right. So this is the sample of the schedule that we have in ITA. Um, basically, meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner are here in the job. Oh, her computer may have frozen. So I'll kind of, I'll jump in until she can join us again. So this then is in the evening. Oh, it happened again. It's okay. So you I start off with the meal. That's okay. We have lunch, breakfast, and dinner in Dejo. Um, And then you have your college prep, identity dialogues, and get invested classes. Um. The instructors will talk more about those specific classes, but those are the classes that you'll be taking with ITA. Um, then in the evening, we have um, choice sessions. The counselors run those choice sessions and they're basically up to you what you wanna do during that time. They'll have different activities for you to pick from some days. Some days will just be movie days. I don't know. It'll be, it'll be up to the counselors and it's super fun. It's just a time for you to enjoy time together um, and be in community. Um, I believe Brandon's gonna talk about it, but I'll preview this a little bit. Students are with us all the time with a counselor, with an adult at all times. You, some of you may be 18, but you're still youth in ITA. So that means that you get to be with us, um, around one of us, um, with multiple people all the time, um, just so you all know. Um, okay, next slide. All right, so some of you might be wondering, what am I gonna bring? I don't know what to bring. Well, here it is. Um, you'll definitely need your IT laptop and charger. You will be using that during the whole week. A backpack will be nice to carry that, that uh, computer and um, charger. Um, but overall, you set the schedule. We're walking, we're going places. Um, so you need some comfortable walking shoes. Bring as many as you want, as long as they're comfortable. You're, you will be walking. It's a college experience and you will be going back and forth everywhere. Uh, we don't know what the weather will be like 100%. Um, so bring sweaters. The classrooms might be cold. Um, they might be really hot. We also don't know it's the summer and those classrooms can be anything. So make sure that you bring something comfortable for, to be in the classes and if you need a blanket for the dorms, bring that as well. Uh, water bottle, uh, there's multiple drinking uh, water refilling stations around campus. So bring one of those so that you are uh, prepared. Um, an umbrella just in case it rains um, or the sun gets too hot, I don't know, either one. Um, and definitely a writing utensil or something that you can write on. 
will bring you everything else that you need, all of the other paper uh, documents that we might need you to fill for the classes. You'll have all of that, but this is really essential for you to be um, to bring what for SRE. As far as clothing, whatever makes you comfortable, as long as you feel comfortable in it, it's appropriate for the university, feel free to bring it. We just want you to be comfortable. If it's cold that you have something to put on well, when we are in those maybe cold classrooms or whatever it is, um, bring those. Um, we definitely don't want you to bring any toasters or anything like that. Everything's on the uh, dining hall. Um, candles or anything like that. We don't want, those are fire hazards, so we don't bring those. Coffee makers, there's coffee downstairs as well as the coffee shop. And anything else that might have any heating or fire elements, we don't, we don't bring those. It's not our rule, it's the housing rule. They don't permit those. So when you go move on camp to campus in a dorm, it'll be the exact same thing. They don't allow any of these things. Okay, thank you, Brenda, for that. Um, I will mention with the packing list, again, that's another item that will be more flushed out and sent to you via email. Um, and then also, I forgot to mention, I'm glad you brought up the temperatures in the buildings. The nice thing about the dorms is that you have your own room and you control the air conditioning. So they usually like you to keep it anywhere between 65 degrees or 75 degrees, but you can adjust to your comfort. So that, that's always nice. That has not always been the case. <laughs> So you don't need to bring a fan unless you need it for the sound effect, but your room will be um, the appropriate temperature you choose. Okay, so moving on to kind of health and safety. Um, there is, as I mentioned at the beginning, every camp on campus has to have what's called camp health. Camp health is made up of university um, health services, nursing staff, and they are and the dorm 24 hours a day, which is great. So um, it's an important part of our camp, but there are there is some little work that we need to do um, ahead of time to be prepared. Starting tomorrow, I've been told today that starting tomorrow, maybe Thursday at the latest, you will receive an email from Camp Health. Um, it is not spam, but make sure you check your spam or junk mail. Um, Please definitely, it is a third party. It's not a University of Wisconsin tool, but it is a tool that all um, university camps use. So basically, just to, if you're not already familiar with what Camp Health is, it's an electronic health record system for camps. It's designed by camp doctors, nurses, and directors, um, and it's a secure and easy way um, to manage medication through a secured web base. So if your student, if your child has medication that they take, um, or even if they don't, there, it is a health screen document that you have to complete online. It's very user-friendly. It just asks for your basic information. Um, if you are taking medication, just kind of ask what, what the medication is, the schedule of it. Um, but it is user-friendly to go through. That does need to be completed before you come in late July, on July 28th. So we have plenty of time. Um, but the key thing is recognizing when that email does come. It is called C Camp Health, or it may be called Camp Health Network. Um, in the email tomorrow I send out, I will send a screenshot of what the um, what the email looks like so that you understand that you're you're in the right spot. I will also send a video that just kind of walks you through how to get started and set up your um, camp doc um, health form. So again, it'll be in the email. Um, it walks you right through. It's real easy. If there's any questions, you can always reach out directly to me. I have access to it. Very limited people do. This is not, um, your health information is not shared with all the staff, just key staff members, myself, Brenda, um, the health professionals through UHS, um, Brandon, our lead counselor, and th they only have information that is need to know, meaning if, you know, we need to remind students, hey, so-and-so, you have an 11 o'clock, you know, before you go to bed, you have a medication to take, um, that type of thing. We want to make sure that um, students stay healthy and stay in their normal um, routine at home just here. So again, I will have a more full explanation, an example of the email, the, the you know, with the screenshot of what the email will look like 
as well as a video to walk you through how to complete your Camp, Del Camp Health Camp Doc Health Form. <laughs> so, um, again, you know, because we are, um, some would say we're still in the pandemic. Some will say we're out, but we still take it very seriously. We do have, we will have supplies on hand for students, um, disposable masks, um, cleaning supplies. Um, all the university housing is immaculate. They have cleaning daily. Um, so the surrounding uh, communities that we're in um, will be very clean. And also we have the supplies to support that. Um, with the health screening, the health form I've mentioned that will be coming in an email um, that does need to be completed before coming. Really basic information. We want to know that if an emergency situation that we have as much upfront information that we can provide health providers with. So in the emergency, if a child is feeling sick and the nurse will do an initial assessment to see if they need to have advanced or more medical attention, we will take them to the hospital. Um, as a youth program, we do have health insurance so that students can be seen, but they will want to talk to you and collect also your health information if procedures need to um, happen. We're going to knock on wood that none of that happens, but hey, in the case that it does, we are covered and ready and the staff will be trained on what to do next. Um, we, I think we mentioned it earlier, but yes, we do have to maintain a 10 to one ratio. So students, if you feel like you don't have any freedom, it's honestly for your own protection. And we are a youth program that we have to stay in compliance. So we are mindful of those ratios. Um, so for example, you'll hear students that we do not allow you and another person to be in your dorm room with the door shut. Um, so we have lots of open space where if you want to have private conversations, but it will be in a secured, um, supervised environment. And the last thing, I'm sorry, I'm kind of all over the order here on the, on the slide, but students in Madison, we love you. We love you all. But this is, even though you're in your hometown, you do not, you cannot leave. You can't have friends come up. Even if you're so familiar with campus or so familiar with downtown, it doesn't matter. Once we're all together as ITA, we move morning, noon, and night together as ITA, okay? So there is no kind of take a break and go home for a little bit, all right? So we're just going to let you know that up front, let families know that up front, that everybody, regardless if you're coming four hours away or four blocks away, everybody is held to the same expectations, Okay. Um, Next, can I mention something? Yes, please. Um, for safety reasons, we will also not tolerate any illegal substances or weapons um, in ITA um, SRE. Um, so make sure that all of that is not brought here, whatever it might be. Um, we want to have a safe environment for all students. So that means that those things will not be permitted or tolerated. Um, if we do get circumstance where we do see any of those things, um, we will have to um, talk to the, we will have to um, let the student go home at that point because it's zero tolerance. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. Sometimes it's hard to talk about the hard stuff, but we got to get it covered. We're going to turn it now over to our awesome instructing team to, um, to kind of describe some of the, co the courses that you will be involved with, with ITA. So with College Prep, we will have Elizabeth start us off and then AJ and then Nino. Okay, sounds great. So now that you've heard all of the important stuff, now you get to talk about uh, what courses you're going to be doing and how you're going to be actually preparing. So uh, my job is to make sure that we um, get you on the right track for college application. So you can see here, we're going to learn about the college application process and start writing your college admissions essay. So we're going to have people from admissions come to talk to you about what it means to apply to UW-Madison, what are your requirements, what are they looking for. We're going to have several writing workshops where we're actually going to sit down and start crafting your essays together. And then we'll continue this work in your college prep course um, during the academic year before that November 1st deadline for UW-Madison. Um, we'll also have 
a representative from the people program coming in. So they will talk to you about um, if you end up coming to UW Madison, where you will end up um, as a people scholar and what that will look like. Also, we'll have representative from financial aid come and speak to you about paying for college, all of your different options there. And we have a really great alumni panel um, in the works. So we have a lot of alumni that are really interested to come and speak to you about applying to college, what college is like, life afterward, like anything you really want to ask, like, please bring your questions. So with college prep, we got a lot going on. We're really excited. So hope you are too. Thank you. At the same time um, in the afternoons, you'll be doing a course we call Get Invested. You can think of it as your tech course, but it's so much more than that. Um, our idea is that you work in groups, hopefully across the different communities and form new community. You think about what brings you together, like what community you have in common with the people in your group and think about problems that you're aware of and then solutions to those problems. So um, <clears throat> the end project, the end product project is a um, business pitch, like you're pitching, hey, we're from this community and we see this problem and we have this solution and <clears throat> um, we get to see each other's. There's mentors that come in, you get to work with me and the other, um, some of the tech staff. And we have a lot of fun talking about how we can use all the skills we have moving into our senior year of high school thinking about our futures and thinking about the future of our world together. Well, your last class, which happens in the morning right after college prep is Identity Dialogues. Um, and as it states, it's really a reflective class. So it's more so conversation based. And we talk about different aspects of our identity that make us um, unique, that make up um, who we are as a human. We kind of just talk about how these interact to create advantages or maybe some disadvantages in our lives and how we can work through those, how we can be proud of the person we are um, and how to really work with people who are different from us um, as our students are moving into college. We're also thinking about their overall emotional well-being. Um, so this is a great time to just explore their identities um, and just have conversations about them. All right. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, AJ, and Nino um, for giving a general overview um, about the courses. I know I'm excited to see um, how the students um, get involved and get it, get excited. So it's really, it really is a fun time. Even though it's coursework, it's fun work. It is, it really is an important work. Um, next, we're gonna turn it um, over to Brandon. Um, again, Brandon serves as our lead counselor and he will give you um, some more insight into the counselors and their role with your students. Thank you. Yeah, so after the students are completed their classes in the earlier parts of the day, um, they're kind of left to us as the counselors for the rest of the period and kind of like the entire week. So we do a very thorough job of making sure that we have a you know well-planned out itinerary um, for the students. Um, part of our training period, we actually spend a lot of time of just game planning and figuring out what we think um, would best suit the students in terms of a full experience. Um, so a lot of the things that we really focus on are community building, um, really introducing the students to each other from the different cohorts, um, making sure that they're building strong bonds, because um, that's kind of what our ultimate goal is for this program, not just, um, you know, obviously we want to um, explore UW-Madison and expose them to post-secondary life, um, but also just build that community so that they know that they have a uh, fallback um, community outside of their immediate families, friends, um, so we really try to push that. So one of the things we do, we always have daily floor meetings. So at the end of the day, long day, they do a lot of um, different things. We like to kind of wind down and have conversations um, at the end of every night, open the floor up to um, any concerns, questions that the students may have, really just have really thought out conversations. Um, and that actually ends up, um, I've seen the last couple of years, um, this is my third SRE now, um, one of the things that the students love to, to partake in is just sitting in small groups and having conversations. So uh, we love to facilitate those and we open up a lot of spaces for that for our students. Um, we also give the students opportunities to kind of decide what they want to do it on their own. Um, we kind of have our 
um, loose ga a game plan of what we want to do, but we also kind of give students opportunities to, um, you know, if they want to go to State Street, we'll go do that. If they want to do some outdoor activities, we can do that. Um, movie nights, we do a lot of that kind of thing. So um, students, you know, think of things that you would like to get done on campus, and we could probably make some sort of accommodation within reason um, to kind of get those things done. Um, also, kind of like some of our highlighted things, we have a lot of highlighted activities that we do. So um, obviously, our big one is the field trip to Devil's Lake. Um, it's a very fun, all day, full experience of, you know, just going out, having a good time, hiking, picnic, playing volleyball, sports, um, just hanging out in a really great space. On uh, And thankfully, the weather has been really good every single time we want. So fingers crossed that it'll be the same this time. Um, obviously, we do a campus tour of UW-Madison. Um, we want to expose the students to uh, the different schools, the different um, the activities and things that are open to them on campus. Um, so it's a really great experience and an immersive experience that's led by UW students as well. So um, what better person or people to ask than students that are currently on campus? Um, we also open it up for a ITA alumni panel. So we have a lot of you know, returning students are in college, you know, have graduated college um, that have gone on different career paths. Um, so they come in and they have conversations about, you know, how ITA has helped them, how um, they've built up their own skills and how they've kind of transitioned that into their own daily lives. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, you know. And this is just like a very, you know, minimal um, collage of things that we've done. Um, in the top left picture, obviously, you can see we spent so many nights just sitting in circles, having conversations like that, staying up late. Um, you know, they am asking questions about, you know, how does life work? How does college work? And we love to kind of partake in that. Um, the picture next to that, uh, we have a spa day that we usually do sometimes. And, you know, some students always like kind of dread the idea, but once they kind of start it and do it, um, they jump in and have a great time. Um, obviously, we have some devil's ache in the bottom right. Uh, in the top right is just one of our pictures during our campus tour. So we really, really can see the growth and progression of our students throughout the, the camp. You know, the first two days, it's always really tough to kind of build that community with people that you've never really seen in person. And then by the end of the, um, the program, they don't want to leave. So um, I always try to like strive for building that really strong community. Um, and I'm going to continue to do that this year um, with the different types of activities and things that we have planned. So I'm really excited uh, to continue doing that. And um, I can't wait to get working with everyone. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Brandon. Um, and yes, it is a highlight of students' experience as of this past spring. Um, students who are on the call, you may remember hearing seniors talking about, or maybe, I don't know if you were there, but um, talking about that SRE is a highlight of their experience, one of the big highlights of um, ITA experience. So we don't want to hype it up too much in case we let you down, but it's exciting for us to put on. So um, so we're really, really excited. Um, moving out. So the day has come and it's time to pack up and move. Um, it's just like moving in except for, um, again, more information specifics will be um, shared in advance, but we do, um, we have programming up until 11 o'clock. So um, students, um, please don't, or I should say ask families, don't be ready quite yet until 11 o'clock to come collect your student. Um, we, um, again, we do have some morning programming and survey and a, a, a goodbye to them and it will allow time for them to pack and then they will be ready for you at 11 o'clock on that Sunday. Um, this again, um, please do not be offended, but we do ask for identification when students are picked up. Um, we don't always have, we don't always remember all parents um, what you look like, but, um, but sometimes you might be having an older sibling pick them up. We just really want to make sure that we are being mindful of who is picking up your students. So if you are not the parent picking them up, um, you need to let us know in advance so we know who to look for. Um, if somebody shows up and they say, hey, I'm their brother and we don't have notice, we're going to be calling you because again, we do take the um, their safety very seriously. We want to make sure that we're releasing them to um, who we expect to be releasing them to. The last thing with move out is if um, if your child does have prescription medication, 
it is important that you pick that up from Camp Health. So just like when you check in, you will be checking out through the same order. Any medication that is left and not picked up does get properly discarded by the health professionals, okay? They will not send medication through the mail or off to a friend or whatever. If it's not you, if it's not you, you picking up your medication, if it's left, it will be thrown away, okay? Next slide, please. Um, so communication, as I've been saying throughout, there will be weekly emails starting tomorrow. Um, usually we pick a day of the week. I think Wednesdays will be it. Wednesdays will be the day. There may not be new information, but a lot of the same information just reiterated. So you don't have to dig through emails. Um, emails, um, uh, the information, I like to compound it so that you never have to look for a particular email that has information. Every email you get will contain the same information that you had been sent before and then anything new. So you won't ever miss any information. We do ask though, if you please, and students especially, just check your email. Even if it's just one day, one time a day, you'll never miss anything, okay? So I know there's some seniors out there, in fact, about 22 of you that still need to confirm what your lunch is, your lunch selection for Devil's Lake. Um, the reason we ask for it so early is that we have to work with our catering and they want that information now. So absolutely have to give me that information no later than Friday. I will send out another email with the link, but I have to have that information by Friday. If I don't have it, I'm going to pick for you and you'll be stuck with that meal. So, um, please make sure that you complete that, um, complete that by Friday. Um, so again, before check your emails, when you get the health forms, you'll fill them out appropriately, including that camp doc, um, moving confirmation and transformation confirmation. Again, we just want to know if there's any circumstances outside that we're not aware of, as far as how you're getting to campus, who's dropping you off. We need to have a conversation in advance if it's outside of parents or legal guardian. Same thing as far as when end the end of SRE comes. We need that ongoing communication to make sure students are being released to who we expect to be them to be released to um, and also how they're getting home. So that wraps up. Um, well, nope, there's one more slide, sorry. So again, our expectations are not too different from during the academic year. Check your email, check your email, keep checking your email. Um, come ready with an open mind, ready to have fun, ready to learn, ready to meet new students. Come with your ideas. You heard from our instructors, like a general overview, but come with your ideas, come with your curiosity, come with questions, be creative. This is that time. Um, and also follow the leadership of staff and counselors. We're not going to do anything that would be, um, something that you don't want to do. Well, it may be the rules, like we said, you know, we have to stay within compliance as far as our ratios. We're going to keep you safe. We're going to keep you moving. We're going to keep you active. Um, but we just ask for that partnership and just follow the leadership of the staff and the counselors. Make good choices. So you heard, don't bring anything that you don't need to bring, especially anything illegal. We have zero tolerance, okay? So make good choices for yourself and for your classmates and support each other, okay? This senior year is gonna be such a, an amazing time for you, but it is more special when we can come together in community and support each other. So, um, so don't be afraid to do that. Okay, that was our last slide. Now we are turning it over to you with any questions. If you are more comfortable writing your question and submitting it in the chat, you can do so, or just come off your mic and ask away. And we are very comfortable in the silence while people are thinking and organizing your thoughts. Okay, here come some questions in the chat. I'm gonna ask staff to kind of help out too if we miss any. But the first one is, can I bring a mini fan in case the weather gets hot? You are more than welcome to, absolutely. 
Um, again, your room, your dorm room, you can regulate the, the temperature, the air conditioning that's in there. But as far as like other sitting spaces, if you're worried about that, but I'm telling you these buildings, it's like, <laughs> it goes from a hundred degrees in the winter time. And then it's like 30 degrees in the summertime. So I have a feeling you're going to definitely want to make sure you bring like a little, like a little, like, you know, long sleeve shirt or a sweatshirt or something that you could throw on. Cause every year is like, Oh my gosh, it's so cold in there. Yeah. Okay. But you can evening curfew time. Um, we lights out for sure by 10 30, I believe I had to look at it, but 10 30 and, um, Sometimes students want to go to bed earlier because we keep you busy. We keep you moving. Um, but we do every evening. The counselors will meet with students, have a floor meeting, go over, you know, kind of any concerns from the day, what's coming up for the next day, and then um, dismiss to the rooms for quiet time. Yeah, and that curfew can change. Like something we are a little bit more lenient on us once we get to the end of the week, we sometimes let students stay up a little later because obviously you want to hang out um and it'll really just depend on the space too i actually haven't been at deja yet so once i'm more familiar with the space um there'll be like community rooms that they could be hanging out and then until later and then once we get to like the later lights out portion then we would ask them to be in their rooms so it'll really depend on the week thank you brandon uh, there's a question about will the students stay on campus during the whole week yes there are no um, alternative um, locations that they'll be staying. Um, Devil's Lake is about as far as we're going outside of campus, um, but nope, they'll be on campus the whole week. The, what they have is Devil's Lake. It is on August 2nd, which is a Friday. And we will send out, um, as you can imagine, we're still doing some of the planning and getting everything together, but you will see a sample of the schedule in advance of coming. That'll be included. I don't know, I think separately, but also within the SRE handbook. Swimming, I'm so sorry to say this, Elias, but no swimming. It's a compliance issue. So unfortunately there is no swimming, but there is, you won't even have time to think you're not swimming because you're gonna be busy doing so many other fun things. Thankfully at Dejope though, we have like a much better outdoor space mm. than we have in the past. So um, Dejope offers us the ability to play tennis, basketball, outdoor basketball courts, sand volleyball courts. There's a very close AstroTurf soccer field um, with some baseball things. So a lot of act outdoor activities will be available to us, thankfully, this year um, mm. that the students will have a lot of free time to go and explore. Um, yeah, but yeah, unfortunately, water is just the one that we don't um, won't be able to do. Thank you. There's a couple other questions. Anybody else seeing? Will students have access to a gym or workout space if they wanted to? Um, you know, I we have to double check. This is something that we do look into, but those spaces are for matriculating or current UW Madison students. And so I, I don't know the answer offhand. I know as a group we were talking about maybe because we're actually right next door to one of the newer facilities. But I would say because of the other outdoor spaces that we have, we, I mean, you'll, you'll be, a, you'll have an opportunity to do a lot of physical activity. So um, we can confirm with that, confirm with you at close to the time if we are able to have access, but in the past, it has not been permitted. Okay. Oh, this is a great question. Thank you for asking. So what about general medications, like over the counter? Um, we, I would say, 
any, any the camp health has that so you don't need to so like pepto bismol tylenol advil aleve some of those general um acetaminophen ibuprofen all of that um they have that available to give to students as healthcare workers as staff, we cannot do that. We cannot give a quick Advil to anybody. So you don't necessarily need to pack that. They have that within Camp Health. Inhalers, you want to bring an inhaler. I would have to honestly check with our nurse contact. I, I would say, please bring yours. Um, but I will ask because that's a that's a great question. Um, just not just don't know the answer offhand right now. But I will follow up. I know in previous years we've had students who who've needed inhalers, and we oh, just yeah. we just had them carry them on themselves because obviously if we're in a school building or away from Camp Health, we won't be able to run over and grab it. So um, I, uh, if you need to carry an inhaler, we've definitely just let students carry that on their own person. Yeah. Yes. And also the same with EpiPen. So when, I know that's a question that comes up with Devil's Lake if you are allergic to bees. Um, if you, I know, I do know Camp Health offers extras if they, you know, they have it on hand. But again, similar to an inhaler, when you need it, you need it. So um, definitely you can have that on hand as well. These are great questions coming in. Really appreciate it. Staff, are you thinking of anything else that maybe we forgot or overlooked to um, mention this evening? We like to think we're thorough, but you know, you never know. There may be a corner that we missed and skipped over. Oh, great question. Do people usually pack bug spray for Devil's Lake? I've seen students do that. Yes, we will have bug spray as well. We also have a portable like quick first aid kit you know, quick band-aids, that type of thing. Believe me, any hiking is not on the dangerous routes or high anything. No, very, very, but you know, still you might trip fall on something and need a band-aid. We have that on hand and bug spray. But if you, you know, if you have a particular kind that you like, you're welcome to bring it, but we will have bug spray on hand. I have would a also bring sunscreen. Sorry. I was just about to say that <laughs> sunscreen. Like I would <laughs> definitely bring sunscreen and I was going to ask if we have sunscreen for them. Yeah. Yes. Let's see. Well, are there any questions, any last questions? And feel free, you can come off your mic if you prefer. I can put out a plug too, um, because I've been in, in contact with our speakers that are going to come for college prep. Oh, and um, uh, Martina from Financial Aid has asked me to collect any questions that students have about the financial aid process. So if you guys have any questions, you can email any one of us here and it'll get to me. Um, or students, you guys have my email from our course last year. So please let me know and I'll be reaching out to you guys soon about that. And families too, like if you guys have any, feel free to pass them along. Oh, I appreciate you mentioning that, Elizabeth. So I'm just adding it to the list to add in um, with follow-up emails. So that's awesome. So definitely, it's for you two parents, not just the students. So... And would it be fair to say, Elizabeth, not only financial aid, but just questions in general about the college process? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll have speakers from admissions from people from financial aid. So anything in that space, if you have questions, let us know. I'll make sure they get passed along. Oh, that's fantastic.
Well, I know it's just yet the beginning of June, but that calendar is moving mighty fast. I am not ready to for it to be June 11th. I don't know about y'all, but ooh, here we go. So even though we've got some time yet before we see you in late July, um, it will go quick. So um, we just ask that please, any questions that you have, do not hesitate. Know that on Wednesdays, at some point on Wednesday, morning, noon, or maybe in the evening, you will be getting your weekly SRE um, email update um, with information. Um, and some I'll try not to make it so lengthy, but just please, just if it happens to be longer than you prefer, please do take the time just to review it over. Not going to add any extra, extra information you really don't need, but it's all pertinent information. Um, so we just keep going and that when July 28th comes, you're ready to roll. So um, please just be watching out for that. Um, but email really any of us at any time. Um, we want to make sure you feel good, prepared and ready for SRE. So I'll do a last call before we disconnect tonight. Last call for any questions live. Well, okay. Well, we definitely, definitely appreciate you taking time during the dinner hour to join us. Um, we're really excited. And um, I'll ask staff to stay on for just a quick minute. But um, families, you are free to go. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you soon.